Hi guys, uh, welcome to part 2 of uh, a detailed guidance to how to prepare for oral examination and doesn't matter whether you are going for second mates, chief mate or masters orals, these tips will be useful to you and uh, this is part 2, I hope you have watched part 1 before, there were some, there were 10 important tips discussed there and in part 2 I will discuss the other 10 tips. Uh, that uh, I had planned for part 1 but I realized that the video is becoming very long so these are the next 10 tips so I'll say tip number 11 because I've discussed 10 tips in my previous video so this is tip number 11 tip number 11 is when you go for oral examination try to avoid using the phrase but this is what happened on my last ship uh, so say the surveyor asks you a question and maybe you have not answered it correctly or uh, the procedure that you described uh, is probably only applicable to your last ship and you try to justify that answer saying but this is what happened on my last ship uh, that will uh, make the surveyor a bit upset or angry because he will think that your knowledge is only limited to what you have seen on your last ship so if your last ship was uh, following incorrect practices this is what you will end up learning you can say that this is based on what I saw on my last ship but don't say this is what happened on my last ship you can always say this is what happened on my last ship but in the books I have also studied that you know you can do this and that so I can't think of a specific example here but it could be something operational it could be something like let's say you know uh, lifting heavy lift cargoes alright so your answer that you give is while I'll be lifting heavy lift cargoes the surveyor says will you be stopping cargo operations the rest of the cargo operations and you say no and the surveyor will say why do you why will you not stop the rest of the cargo operations because you'll say on my last ship the chief officer never stopped rest of the cargo operations we were lifting heavy lift cargo together with the other cargo so that may make the surveyor angry so maybe it was applicable on your ship maybe it worked very well maybe you have misunderstood it was not a heavy lift cargo so don't say that so you can say that although on my last ship i didn't see the surveyor chief officer stopping the cargo operations but i have read in the books it's a good idea it's advisable to stop the cargo operations on the rest of the ship all right that is tip number 11. tip number 12 is surveyor wants to know uh, if you can be trusted or not so all that you do is that you have to demonstrate that you can be trusted or not so part of that is of course being honest uh, accepting your mistakes accepting that you don't know everything calling the master when you are required to or calling the chief mate when you are required to uh, being honest and showing those officer like qualities this is what he wants to see so the more honest you are uh, the more uh, accepting that you are so if you make a mistake accept the mistake if you don't know something accept it um, show that honesty if the surveyor says you are honest uh, and uh, you are accepting you when you don't know something that shows that on the ship the master will be able to trust you all right so be honest in your um, in your approach uh, don't try to impress the surveyor by, by you know bullshitting uh, or trying to fib your way through or trying to act smart don't try to act smart be confident but not over smart tip number 13 is as a chief mate or a master when you go for rules of course in my previous video I told you you still have to study rules of the road but as a chief mate master also please make sure that you have studied about the law the regulations documentation the latest M notices MS notices whatever is applicable in your country make sure that you talk a lot about that and you know a lot about that because as a master and a chief mate you have to demonstrate your knowledge of law regulations documentation uh, and ROR rules of the road it's not excusable as a chief mate you know stability is something you should focus more on apart from of course the other thing I'm saying your strongest point should be stability as a second mate your strongest point should be chart chart corrections you know um, um, navigation aspect of stuff you may not know about cargo operations so much but you should know about the uh, chart correction so focus on the role that you will be performing and 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 spend more time studying on it I know there's lots to study you are expected to know everything as a second mate you are also asked questions about ship stability cargo work I'm not saying not to study I'm saying uh, you can study everything else but focus more on the job that you will be performing on that current rank in the ship so if you have gone for chief mate orals you have to focus on ship stability you have to know it like the back of your hand you may not know so much about the law maybe uh, but you have to know about stability as a master law regulations and documentation all right so these are the things as a second mate third mate of course firefighting safety all that is there uh, rules of the road like i said it's for all the ranks you have to know it like the back of your hand but 
think about the role you'll be performing think about the orders you've gone for think about what job they do on the ship and you have to know about that all right so when i say stability as a chief mate i don't mean only stability on one type of ship that your type of ship or the ship that you have been sailing on you can't just say i know stability about container ships no you have to know about stability about grain carriers rules of uh, um, sorry our uh, rotor ships grain carriers uh, timber ships so on and so forth so you have to know about stability about all kinds of ships Tip number 14, or not tip number 14, but before I finish here, you have to show the surveyor as a chief metal master that you are capable of making decisions on your own. You are not relying on, um, uh, you know, you don't have the luxury of calling the master as a chief metal master. So show the, show the ability to make decisions. Of course, you will contact the DPA and the classification society, the P&I surveyor, uh, agents and all that. You use them, but you should be able to demonstrate that you can make decisions in terms of emergencies, especially when you are at sea or on your own. Uh, people cannot advise you so quickly. That is the ability you have to demonstrate as a chief mate and master. So even if you don't know something, even if you are, um, you know, uh, something you are not in your comfort zone, be confident, show that poise, show that confidence as a master and chief mate and that is what the survey wants to see. That brings me to my tip number 14. Tip number 14 is uh, related to what I was talking about before. So if you don't know something, what will you do? So if you don't know something, firstly you have to accept that uh, you are not very sure about it. You don't say I don't know or I have never heard about it, don't say that, but say I'm uh, as per um, I'm not very sure about it, but my knowledge is based on refer to the source of information. All right. So if you if you have been asked something about search and rescue and you can't remember the maneuver, then say I know the search and rescue information can be found in the I am sir manual volume number three, or you can find or you can talk about or if he says uh, what's the latest MS, MS notices or M notices and you have not studied about the latest M notice, you can tell them that oh I I I did study on it but I can't remember it right now but I know that I'll go into the AMSA website or I'll go to the relevant MMD website. Um, and find out and I know where to find out the M notice from and I'll go there and I'll find out the latest M notice. So make sure that you show that you know where to source information from even though you may not have the answer right now you can go into a manual so if there are if you're asked questions about you know radar or ARPA operation or something like that or cargo securing you can say that I'll go into the cargo securing manual I have the stability booklet I have the you know talk about the publications talk about the documentation talk about the SMS company policies procedures so that shows the surveyor that although you didn't know the answer you know how to go and get the answer when it is required all right especially on the ship you then you have all that information so that also is very helpful uh, tip number 15 is don't go asking unnecessary questions or uh, questions that are not important to answer your question to the surveyor. Don't start asking questions to the surveyor. So if the surveyor has given you a scenario, he's described a scenario and there is some information that is not there, don't start asking extra questions because then you know sometimes the surveyors are not very happy about it because uh, uh, you also then start leading them into areas that you should not be leading them into. So if there is a situation say let's say it's an ROR situation, there is one ship on your starboard bow um, and he says there's a ship on your starboard bow, it's a crossing situation, what you would do? Uh, don't start asking questions about is there any other ship around, how much is the distance, can I see the ship visually, don't say all this. So, so all you will say is I will determine if there's a risk of collision using visual bearings or the ARPA and radar both together and then I will take action. If it's on my starboard bow, then I am the giveaway vessel. I will take action all to post to starboard, make a broad alteration. If I am the stand-on vessel, right? If I am the stand-on vessel, then I maintain course and speed, but also keep an eye on the giveaway vessel. If it doesn't take action, then I will take action. But don't start asking unnecessary questions. Don't start asking for unnecessary information because uh, if he has given you a situation, describe a scenario to you, just take action. And then again, if he follows up with that, then you say that based on what you gave me or the information I gave, you gave me, this is what I would do. All right, so don't start putting ships in the vicinity or you know making cargo loading stability complicated. Tip number 16, and this is a very important tip. So don't be like me, but in the oral examination, speak slowly, but show confidence. So take your time in answering the questions be structured, be logical, be detailed and, and not not bookish, not memorized answers, but practical answers. Show that you will do this practically as well, not only because you have studied this in the book, but uh, give detailed responses, give structured, speak slowly, show confidence, don't show that you are bored, don't worry about boring the surveyor, but uh, slowly, firmly, detailed, but with confidence. Tip number 17, 
talk freely don't hesitate to show off your knowledge if you know a lot about something show it off show off show off but not arrogantly uh, not in a way that you know the surveyor will say why is this guy being arrogant be humble about it but talk about it with passion talk about it that shows that your knowledge don't think that the surveyor is getting bored or that you should probably stop talking now he will stop you if required or she will stop you if required but you keep talking about it if especially if you know about the area it's a good idea for you to talk more about it because then the surveyor you're kind of impressing the surveyor slowly and steadily because the surveyor says oh or he's thinking in his mind that this guy has studied or this girl has studied um, in quite detail so talk as much as you want but you know uh, don't worry about boring surveyor talk freely show with confidence show passion show that you have studied all right that is tip number 18 the surveyor will stop you if required tip number 17 it was i think okay tip number 18 if the surveyor says what else when you are answering a question or you are finished answering question uh, it may be a hint to you so if the surveyor is saying what else uh, is there anything else is there something else you have to say then that may be a hint so that may show that you are probably you have missed some key words or key phrases or left out key elements of the answer Uh, so say he is asking you about enclosed space entry procedure and you say I'll go as per the checklist and then he says okay tell me what is there in the checklist and you start listing the points of the checklist you may have missed a critical element of that checklist you have may have mentioned others which were critical or not so critical but you may have left out a very critical of so go back to it and think about it take some time especially the surveyor asks you is there anything else you have to mention or is there anything else you want to add it may be a hint that he's given to you that he may be happy with your answer but still he wants you to cover that key element or the key phrase or those key words that you should be including in the answer all right so that is tip number 18 tip number 19 is never compromise on safety the surveyor will tempt you to compromise on safety asking you to climb mast without safety belt or asking you to you know go into spaces without doing the enclosed space checklist or going to spaces alone uh, you know don't fall for that whether you are doing it on the ship or not uh, that is not a concern you have to always prioritize safety of persons ship and cargo in that particular order of course and make sure that you are keeping yourself safe and everybody else safe never compromise on safety no matter how much the surveyor tempts you so as a master or chief mate when you go for orals the surveyor may tempt you with commercial pressure that oh you should be loading that extra cargo even though it's exceeding stack weight or you should be uh, going at full speed to get the pilot yeah, because you know if the pilot uh, is delayed then the ship will be fined or uh, no you should not fall for those commercial pressures especially if it compromises safety you should fall for commercial pressures only if it's an operational point of view but not from a safety point of view always prioritize safety always all right and the last tip and very important tip the day before your orals stop studying at 5 pm by 5 pm in the evening you should stop studying if your orals is next day in the morning or even in the afternoon stop studying by 5 or 6 you should be stop studying have your dinner rest relax watch a movie meet your friends don't go drinking or smoking or anything like that uh relax your mind do meditation if you have to exercise uh, but relax your mind if you have not studied something till 5 pm the previous day i don't think it's going to help you after that anyway you must stop studying by 5 pm the previous night relax talk to your friends don't talk about studies talk about anything else the important thing is to relax your mind let all that information that you have been studying settle into your mind all right be confident doesn't matter you can never you have to accept that you will never know everything about ships even i don't know although i have been in this profession for so long so you have to con- be confident about what you know and accept what you don't know and that you don't know everything it's not life or death you will get another opportunity if worst case scenario you will fail but whatever you know you should be confident about it and you should stop studying the previous night don't start cramming in the morning don't start memorizing stuff in the morning of your orals that will uh, shake your confidence so have faith in yourself doesn't matter don't go asking questions or what is the surveyor asking no just stay still maintain that stillness have faith in your planning and the way you went about it and then go for orals hoping for the best all right so i'll repeat my tip number 11 to 20 uh, tip number 11 is don't mention the phrase on my last ship this is what happened tip number 12 is surveyor wants to know that if you can be trusted so be honest tip number 13 is as a chief mate master or second mate also focus on the aspects of the job that you will be performing 
So as a chief mate, you have to know about stability on all kinds of ships as a master law documentation, all that is important. Tip number 14 is uh, if you don't know something, mention the source of information. Tip number 15, don't go asking unnecessary questions and unimportant information that surveyor has not given out initially. Tip number 16, speak slowly but with confidence. Tip number 17 is talk freely, show off your knowledge but be humble about it. Let the surveyor stop you if required. Tip number 18, if surveyor says what else or is there anything else you want to add, think about it. You may be missing something. Tip number 19, never compromise on safety no matter what happens. And tip number 20, stop studying by 5 or 6 in the evening the previous day of your oral examination. Relax your mind, meditate, have faith in yourself, accept your limitations, accept your strengths and then go with confidence for your oral examination. Guys, I hope these two videos helped you uh, with some important strategies and tips that you can employ for oral examination. Thank you for watching the channel and keep giving me feedback on what you want to see next in my videos. The only reason I have started this channel is to help my fellow mariners with all the information that was not available to me when I was a student. Thanks for watching and bye for now.